This is Delhi. Please stand by for our next program. This is All India Radio. In commemoration of the World Water Day to be celebrated on 22nd March 2023, in our national program of talks tonight, we bring you a panel discussion entitled Every Drop Counts. The participants are retired Colonel Shashikan Dalvi, the National Coordinator, Water Conservation, the Climate Reality Project, India. Shalaja Deshpande, Founder and Director of Jivit Nadi or the Living River Foundation. Gunwant Sonawane, the Founder of Bhujalwari Movement. And Karishma Punjabi of All India Radio Pune, who initiates and moderates the discussion. Hello listeners, tomorrow is 22nd March 2023. The occasion is World Water Day. And to commemorate this golden day, we have in our studio not one, not two, but three eminent personalities who have actively conserved every drop of water, just like the title of today's program, Every Drop Counts. Welcome to the National Program of English Talks with me, Karishma. Pune is one of the fastest growing cities in India. In 1991, Pune's population was 1.6 million which doubled to 3 million in 2011 and a whopping 6 million count is projected for the year 2032. An ongoing study details that in 10 of India's most populous cities, including Pune, over a third of the development in the last decade has been conducted over natural recharge zones or low-lying areas typically prone to flooding. It is therefore imperative that preservation of natural resources, lakes, streams, wetlands and infrastructural development is integrated to increase infiltration and reduce the stormwater runoff. On that note, I take pleasure in introducing our champion water crusaders present here to commemorate the World Water Day. We have with us retired Colonel Shashikan Dalviji, who served the Indian Army from 1969 to 2002. Colonel Dalvi is the National Coordinator for Water Conservation working through an independent chapter of Nobel Laureate, Al Gore's Climate Reality Project in India, harvesting rainwater across 100 villages. That is only in the Bede district of Maharashtra. Colonel Dalvi has been the recipient of multiple awards and recognitions from various government, NGO organizations and school. I welcome you, Dalvi, sir. We are honored to have you here. Hello, friends. I wish all of you happy World Water Day 23. Thank you, Dalvi, sir. We also have with us another water crusader, Miss Shailaja Deshpande, the founder and director of Jeevit Nadi, the Living River Foundation. Revival of rivers through community participation is the very noble mission of this foundation. The Jeevit Nadi Foundation was the recipient of the Green Hero Award from the Energy and Resources Institute in 2017. Shaila Jaji, welcome to the show. Thank you, Karishma, and hello, everyone. We also have with us a computer engineer. Now you'd ask, what is a computer engineer doing on a World Water Day? Well, my dear listeners, this computer engineer is so passionately involved in the field of water conservation that he has successfully stored more than 400 crore liters of water to date and has also been appreciated for his work with the ADP President Global Corporate Social Responsibility Award in New York in 2017. We are talking about none other than Mr. Gunwan Chinda Sonavane. Welcome Gunwan sir, it is such a pleasure to have you in our studio today. Thank you Karishma and it's a pleasure to be here on the uh, show. So as we all know, the World Water Day 2023 campaign is now live. This year, the focus of the UN observance is on accelerating change to solve the water and sanitation crisis. The global campaign called Be the Change encourages people to take action in their own lives to change the way they use, consume and manage water. Dalvi sir, you have pioneered the design and implementation of Pune City's first ever rooftop rainwater harvesting project in 2003. The work you have done is invincible. We'd love to hear some inspiring anecdotes during the teething stage of this very incredible journey. Please tell us. Yeah, thank you, Karishma. Everybody is aware that there is a water shortage. And when you go for morning walk or move around here and there, those people who are staying in the fringe areas of Pune city, 
tanker waters moving around here and there every time we see that there are tankers moving around that means that either the pune municipal corporation supply is short or our water usage is rather large that's how if you see the campaign the united nations campaign sentence which just now karishma said that encouraging people to check their water use and how we consume it you know we are authorized 135 liters per day per person unfortunately in pune city it's unequal water distribution right from the viman nagar we get about 80 liters per day per person to the gauthan pune that is center of pune they get about 350 liters per day per person now this is quite huge because of this what has happened is our water usage is increased tremendously and now unless and until uh, we find out our own to manage the water which we have been received look there is only 1% of the fresh water on this planet though it is aqueous planet and 75% of the the surface of the planet is covered with 97% of water and that the 1% is for all over the world and not only for human beings let us be clear it is for every all flora fauna and everyone when i came here first in after retirement in 2002 2003 in the society which i saw every day three tankers used to come it's a middle class society and we i found it is not possible that the cost of a diesel and cost of water tanker will keep on increasing that is so whatever i have seen in rajasthan uh, during my army days i stayed there almost for 5 years uh, because in maharashtra city there was no case study available where for the multi story complex or even for the small houses where people have used rain water harvesting so i decided to use whatever i have seen it fortunately society people supported me and 2003 we designed and implemented first and then there i found our bore well which is to give just half an hour of water a day now started giving from that monsoon of 2003 10 to 12 hours a day so that becomes immediate efficacy of a design is proved and how the mother nature helps you if we help the mother nature nothing big about it earlier the soil was naked water is to percolate down i always say that ground water is a recurring deposit made by the mother nature and every year come monsoon uh, she is to do recurring deposit of the rainfall it to percolate down go down and raise the water table but with the advent of the urbanization everything is covered naked soil is very less so if it is covered in pune the percolation rate in city is down from 35% to barely 7% now that is not acceptable now that we understand the problem of water scarcity that it cannot be a one off errand to be done with so gunwan sir please tell us how exactly do you create the storage of 400 more than 400 crore liters of water so 6 years back when we started this movement called as bhujal abhiyan so bhujal abhiyan is the water movement which is not a ngo or not a company but it's a movement which is uh, based on the principle of varkari sampraday we know that varkari sampraday is a 700 to 800 years old tradition and uh, every year people comes together in the holy place of dehu and alandi and they walk on a foot for 21 days just to see the god vithala or panduranga so similarly we started this movement with the intention or with the aim of increasing the ground water level and create the water literacy among the people because now in days we see in every village there are doctors nurses teachers everybody is there but we don't have the uh, people or the scope of people or the talent of the people who understand the technical things of the water so our intention basically was to create the, that group of people who understand the technology science behind the water and this uh, story has started 6 years back so as you mentioned that we have created 400 crore liter water storage capacity so in that what we have done so we are working with 34 villages we have formed a cluster of 34 villages where we are uh, creating a water shed management plan water security plan we develop a water budget of the village and according to that we plan to work so in in that work we include the science so for that we need a geologist hydrologist with their help we create a watershed 
plants and water security plants on the basis of that we develop a different structures so when i say different structures we create or rejuvenate the lakes we do a ccts deep ccts where where the geologist and hydrologist suggested the place where we do the work and also as per their suggestion we do nala widening and deepening work so on the surface level we have created this 400 crore liter water storage capacity i would like to add the one thing so there is a problem of a volunteer so that's why we have principally follow the structure of a worker sampradaya so in our movement in every village we have a 6 to 10 members we called as a bhujal varakari so their intention is to save each and every drop of water because as dalvi sir mentioned that there is only 1% of fresh water available which is a invisible we would like to make that invisible to visible so that people understand the importance of uh, ground water kunwant sir urban india's biggest challenge as of date is water scarcity the data reveals that residents in 22 out of 32 major cities have to deal with water shortage every single day So what precautions would you recommend that need to be kept on adding day after day in our lives to keep conserving water Sure that is a very good question actually but before i go into the precaution thing because we can get lot of precautions on the google and we can go the lot of i mean we can read all all the statistics on the google but i would like to give one example of the hummingbird we in the school read heard of the hummingbird story So basically uh, there was a long forest in that forest there were a fire and lot of animals comes out of that forest everybody was seeing that fire is there on the forest but hummingbird was one of the bird who flies into the lake and the bird takes a drop of water and that that water drops into the fire this is what up and down was going on and elephant saw that and ele- elephant was laughing on the hummingbird and replied that what you will make a difference hummingbird said that i will do best what i can uh-huh. so i would like to make a point that be a hummingbird don't worry about the people there are a lot of problems challenges we are bombarded with that but work on the part of the soil conservation water conservation and do whatever best you can do that and about the question there are a lot of precautions are available so we need to follow those precautions that uh, repair your taps and all these things these precautions are available but be a, a hummingbird in your real life thank you oh, we need to keep humming this yes. mm-hmm. every single day conserve drop by drop thank you gunwan sir shall you ma'am i remember that once upon a time pune had seven rivers but they were covered with soil so that we could make land available for housing so when i heard about jeevit nadi the flashback dots got all connected i'd like to request you to enlighten us about your vision please thanks karishma first of all but uh, let me bring you back about the lost uh, seven rivers you mentioned about yes please uh, urbanization actually takes a toll on every land or every resource which is available but at the same time rather than pondering over what has been lost can we think about what is present and how do we conserve Beautiful. it so that's how the participatory efforts volunteering um, bringing the community to the uh, rivers basically because we work on the urban rivers so our main focus is bringing people to closer to the rivers when you look at the state of the rivers that is the most important way to go about it unless and until community comes closer understands the pains understands the issues which the rivers are facing currently people's participation is the key for revival of any resource if you are talking about the urban rivers why i mentioned why i specifically mentioned the urban rivers is because the urban population very sadly doesn't feel that the availability of water is a concern even they don't even think it's a cause for concern yes so probably uh, this is with some people who are getting a, a continuous or a water supply which is as per their yeah, you know, uninterrupted uh, un- uninterrupted yeah. but at the same time we are also the biggest polluters biggest polluters of our all resources the urbans need to be made aware about it see the river has not changed she has been flowing eternal years agree lakhs and crores of years we have changed her form by building dams that is the first intervention which we 
as uh, citizens did river is a flow of life and the first flow is blocked by our dams and then the interventions as per the requirement the bridges on the rivers there are a lot of sewage treatment plants on the river so what you do is actually intervening in a pristine natural resource so this needs to be understood which urban people do not realize because we get when you open the tap is the same river which is coming to your own house your own home the same water is reaching through taps if you don't get that tap water you make a call ask for a tanker if you don't get a tanker you bore into the ground yes. and you take water but, but, but like dalvi sir said when you request for a tanker the diesel costs and other hidden costs all those also uh, affect yes isn't it the cost and most importantly water is interconnected with everything you cannot separate out the surface water and ground water because it's the interface you intervene into any one thing the other water resource is going to get impacted okay. so unless until we have that overview of you know rejuvenating these water resources and rather than thinking as an alternative that if i don't get a tap water i buy the tanker no it is everything is supported with each other so you must have a surface water you should also enrich the ground water and there are connecting dots which uh, gunman mentioned yes, about yes. water harvesting so it's a domino effect really isn't it one actually leads to so many pitfalls you know absolutely um, is it right to say that we need to reduce our water footprint somehow each day consciously we have to means water footprint is yes the key mm -hmm. but how do you measure the water footprint please that please tell is, us. see if you see the river which is flowing as i said that mutha river originates from 60 to 65 kilometers away west of pune the origin of mutha has different issues and problems of our to water rest of the 8 months these people are water scarce where during monsoon they have heaviest rainfalls unless or until there is a heavier rainfall the catchment area will not get water did you say 8 months there is a scarcity yes immediately right. after the monsoon yes. they are water scarce remember this is a one common resource which is the mutha which is flowing it meets mula at the confluence then it goes meets bhima and there is a ujni dam so the ujni gets all polluted water so whatever we are doing with the resource is actually impacting either uh, into the downstream area or in the source region so it's a interconnection of everything i just want to add on to what uh... I say like I said. Look, what we have to understood in the as far as urban, it is same thing in the rural area also True. because I am in the rural area. True. But what is happening is uh, we have got money. A urban person compared to rural, we do not understand value of water. Now, one percent of fresh water for how many population? In 1950, whatever was the water availability per person, and today it is down by 60 percent. these facts should be known uh, such a thing fact should be actually brought to the notice of the common man he doesn't know you know in his daily life he doesn't know what is a uh, water shortage and we are responsible for that as an individual in 135 liters per day per person 65 liters water gets converted into what we call san pani or what we call it a gray water today that gray water goes into the sewage and goes back to the treatment plant supposed to which doesn't happen so that means when we talk about uh, like you pose a question given what precautionary measures can be told the precautionary measure starts from making awareness which is one of the uh, points of the this year's un campaign yes is one of this because you have to spread the awareness and this awareness starts right from the people who are using it whether it's a student or whether you and me in this 65 liters water how can i reuse it you know today our attitude towards the water is use and discard that should go away now okay so that brings us to the lakes that you have rejuvenated so far gunwan sir please throw some insight on that so we have a, a concept called as a one village one lake 
because uh, shailesh jatai also spoke about the river so every uh, village i mean every village don't have the access to the river but there are certain stages of a water so it starts from the precipitation to evaporation infiltration then runoff and then surface water storage and then it goes to the uh, ocean or lake so we realize that if we want to make the villages water independent we need to create the water storages in the villages itself mm uh-huh. so then at that time we thought that there is there are a lot of lakes in the villages i mean a lot of villages have the lake but we we saw some challenges either those lakes are illegally acquired by the people oh. one other one was that those are not in good condition either they are leaked or they are full with silt then we realized that we should implement concept called as one village one lake so that we can store each and every drop of water which is running off from the surface we can store into that water so till now we have rejuvenated uh, 16 such lakes in 11 villages wow so problem is common everywhere whether it's rural or urban but the more focus is on the urban areas but gandhi ji told uh, that khede kade parat chala mm-hmm. but but to do that we need help in the rural areas as well and a lot mm-hmm. of csr companies don't want to uh, cross the limit or the radius of 50 to 100 km rejuvenation of this lake we I'll, i'll tell three impacts of this first please the good silt transported into the farm so that tough layer soil has been converted mm-hmm. one second ground water level because lake is one of the uh, highest resource to recharge the ground water because we do the shaft as well into that lake under the guidance of the geologists so we use a science there so that ground water we are able to recharge that and lot of animals are getting the water out of this lake oh. and we we see lot of benefits i mean we can talk further mm. but yes one village one lake is really helping us excellent but sir when we store this water there is a difference between access to water and access to clean water so is any processing being done to clean the water currently we are not using this water for the drink this is only for the agriculture purpose as dalvi sir mentioned that we need to work upon the recycling of the water currently mindset is that use the water and discard yes. that is something needs to be uh, changed and as dalvi sir and shailesh jatai was also mentioning that we need to keep creating the awareness i think this show will do that part oh it certainly will someone who is helping us probably in all probabilities someone who is helping us to clear this water pollution as per a marine biologist is that the marine algae and a certain type of bacteria have started eating plastic in the water so my question to you shailaja ma'am is what is the role of science and scientists in river revival as per the projects taken over by jeevit nadi oh karishma this you are a, loving uh, this question i can see it on your face <laughs> yes that's absolutely such a wonderful question because science is the key mm-hmm. to understand the ecosystem of the river science is the key where you want to have or you need to have a hydrogeologist where the surface water and subsurface water uh, what is the interface between the surface water and sur- subsurface water uh-huh. when you have to manage the water science is the key where the natural ecosystems have to yeah, be that understanding conserved protected and rejuvenated because uh, the way you mentioned about the marine system there is a fresh water system where we call it as a riparian zone along the river bank the riparian zones are the specific species of flora uh-huh. and aquatic species of fauna which have a interaction with each other because soil and water cannot be separated cannot be separated it they get emulsified never, yes it oh. has to be otherwise hmm. it's like for a river you cannot create a canal currently all over the world this riverfront development things are going on which are actually that is separating away the interface of the water with the soil mm. and it is also disturbing the natural ecosystems as i said there are four type of flows one which is a linear flow which goes by the gravity yeah. another which is a lateral flow which spreads around so if the river is flowing it has to spread into the soil so the soil moisture can take the water in so can and yes yeah, and yeah. infiltrate inside 
and then there is a vertical flow where the recharging of the ground water which uh, shashikant dalvi sir and gunwant has been saying about it so these are the vertical flows and if you balance and conserve all this the science is required how to manage these flows then only the hydrological cycle which we learnt in to school but it has been learned <laughs> like a hydrological cycle <laughs> what it contains it's the flows which we have to manage and which needs science it needs flora it needs fauna it needs soil and water is a connection like a nervous systems Absolutely. backbone which is connecting all these systems i think somewhere we've forgotten that the water cycle and the life cycle are nothing but one yeah they are a one system yes. they are not two separate systems True. isn't True. it but like you said we can't just sit in one place and expect the government to do everything True. isn't it so um please tell us what exactly can be done to handle this water crisis i mean i'm talking about system government level community level and then of course finally at the individual level yeah uh karishma this is a very good question because i am finding this as an opportunity to <laughs> you know uh, convey share, to our listeners convey, yes. uh, convey to our listeners yes uh, in one sentence i can say whether it's a river or water it's my river my responsibility and every community if whatever tap water or bore water or any water which we are drinking we are responsible for every drop of water we are drinking we are utilizing Absolutely. and then we have to think about when you create a waste water how do i make a every use from consume to conserve so Beautiful. by using more and more biodegradable and natural products you know forgetting little bit now ease of use and matter of conveniences and all these terminologies have to be now stopped reduced yes. and we need to work on how can we conserve consume to conserve has to be the mantra <laughs> we we need to keep humming it like kagun mantra exactly said. i mean i echo what uh, shilajata has said and not only water but the water because all are interdependent water soil and afforestation and that's need to be go hand in hand i will just add on to this yes sir it recharge ground water table recycle the grey water mm-hmm. as individual level i'm talking about this and recycle reuse then conserve every drop of water which yes. is supplied by anybody mm-hmm. whether it's a pure water tap pmc or anybody and then discard only the black water because at the moment we are not doing anything much about the black water as such so at least change over from the um, use and discard to this we may be able to so a lot of things this has been such an enlightening episode of my own life i must say and i'm sure the listeners will completely agree with me so dalvi sir shailaja ma'am gunwan sir on behalf of all india radio i'd like to thank each one of you dil se for making us understand the nitty gritty associated with water conservation on world water day it really is a privilege to be sharing this space with you thank you so so very much Thank you Akashwani thank you thank you, you. you Akashwani give me the opportunity <laughs> thank you this drip drop drip drop clock must be stopped on this clickety clockety note this is Karishma signing off with a hope to keep making waves by saving water save the blue to stay green thank you and goodbye in the national program of talks tonight in commemoration of world water day to be celebrated on 22nd march 2023 You are listening to the panel discussion entitled "Every Drop Counts." The participants were retired Colonel Shashikant Dalvi, the National Coordinator, Water Conservation, the Climate Reality Project, India; Shalaja Deshpande, founder and director of Jivit Nadi or the Living River Foundation; Gunwant Sonawane, the founder of Bhujalwari Movement; and Karishma Punjabi of All India Radio Pune, who initiated and moderated the discussion. produced and presented by Gaurav Shimpi of All India Radio Pune this program came to you from the Indraprastha channel of Delhi station of All India Radio